So at the request of some subscribers, and I guess in the interest of experimentation, I've started to do something that uh, usually my philosophy goes very much against, and that is using the mouse. In fact, using the mouse relative, uh, totally differently than you've seen it be used before on most operating systems, but still, it feels a little weird to use the mouse again. So let me explain the, you may see the video title description. I, I've started to do plumbing on Linux, which I guess I should explain briefly. Um, now there is this operating system that looks like this called Plan 9 from user space. And this is its text editor slash UI slash, it pretty much does everything. Now, um, I don't know that much about Plan 9, but uh, it's pretty interesting in that uh, the mouse, all three buttons of the mouse, left, middle, and right, all have an important function. And your development environment, your text editor, uh, are sort of have mouse, the mouse used as a core key to open things up, send things to other programs, all this kind of stuff. Um, so for example, if I, I can just type arbitrary text. So for example, win happens to be a command. And if you highlight that and right click it, or excuse me, middle click it, it will actually run the command. It's really weird. So you can just write a command and run it with the mouse and uh, you know with the, the middle key or the right key, uh, or the right button, I should say. Uh, is often called the plumber, or it's a plum key, which can do a whole bunch of things, including opening files and just other stuff, depending on what you have highlighted. So what I wanted to do, uh, I've gotten a couple emails recently about this. People have been asked, I, I'm not quite sure why, maybe it's just a coincidence, but people have been asking for some kind of, kind of plumber uh, or plumber ideas for Linux, and some people have even sent me their own uh, examples. So I, wanna, I wrote a little plumbing script to replicate opening files or dealing with text highlighted with, you know, in Linux. Anyway, we'll, we'll just get into it. Um, so uh, I'll go ahead and say it has a pretty cool feature that I'll talk about later, but some basic features I want to talk about now. So, um, so at a basic level, you know, let's say I have a terminal document open. Now, of course, this could be in the terminal. This could be something you have highlighted in Firefox. It actually doesn't matter. As long as you have it highlighted, it's going to work the same way. But I'm using a terminal here. Um, so let's say I highlight this text. Now, I have a script that I am using as a plumber uh, bound to super C right now. And if I run it, what it does is it will give me some options. It'll detect first off, okay, this is what you have highlighted. Um, but it'll give me some options for what to do. So this is a, a URL, so I'll say go to URL or something like that. So that'll pop up. Um, my internet's actually slow today, but the uh, web address will pop up in a browser. Same thing if I you know, have a, an email address here, I can say, oh, it gives me the option of looks like email. So I can open that up in my email client, send an email to myself or something like that. Additionally, you may have noticed in the options, so for example, if I have some kind of location highlighted, I can, uh, it'll give me a maps option, and that'll actually open it up in a window of open street maps, if you want that. Uh, so that'll pop up after a second, so you can do, of course, you can change it to Google Maps if you really want. I'm sure you know I don't use Google for anything besides YouTube. Um, but that'll do that. And additionally, you know, you can search eBay for something or, or anything else. Now that's just opening browser windows. That's relatively basic, um, but there's some other things as well. So for example, here, you know, here if you have uh, some kind of command, let's say said, and this could be, again, I, I'm in Vim right now, but you could be on the command line as well. But if you have some kind of command highlighted, it'll actually automatically detect that and it will give you the option of looking at its manual. And that'll auto-generate a PDF manual and bring it up for you so you can search through it in a different window, you know, again, so you don't have to open up a new window and press man or something like that. Just a nice little thing to have. Um, now, one little note here before I, I, I'm going to go into how the script works in just a second, but I will say one note about Vim is, um, well, I'm using NeoVim right now. I think it might only be a NeoVim problem, but for whatever reason, um, you're supposed to be able to highlight stuff with the visual mode, you know, using V or whatever, and that's supposed to, your primary selection is supposed to be able to read from that if you set a particular option, auto load. You can look it up, your, or 
auto select or something like that. But in the current build of NeoVim, it isn't actually working. So right now you have to select it with, um, you basically just have to select it with uh, your mouse or whatever. But once that gets fixed, you can select it with visual mode in Vim as well. So you don't actually have to even use your mouse. So that's just a note. Okay, so let me talk about how the scope works, but also it's what I think is its best feature. Um, so I'm gonna open up Here's the script I have. It's pretty short. It's in Bash. I usually write things in POSIX compliance shell, uh, but I had to write this in Bash and I'll explain why. Um, or I probably don't actually have to. I just don't know how to do this in POSIX shell. Um, so the idea behind it is all of the different options for things you can do, they're all different functions. So web search, Wikipedia, Wiktionary, Maps, eBay, um, all those kind of things are different functions. And what you can do is, I don't know if you know this, but if you say declare, f in bash that'll give you a list of all the functions you've declared so i can actually take you know, let's say take the third element of this output and we will put that into d menu and then give it a prompt that says pick a function okay so that'll give me a menu of all my functions and that's really what this script does it defines a bunch of functions for with what you can do with output and then it just gives you a list of those so i don't have to redo them every time, you know, change the options every time I add a new function or something. Um, additionally, there, so for things like email, where you're only going to be using, I mean, I only want the email option if I'm highlighting something that looks like email, right? Um, so it actually checks firsthand before it checks to see, does that actually look like an email address? Same thing with the URL. Does that actually look like a URL and only if it does exist does it coin the function and then the function will appear. Um, oh, I, I don't think I mentioned before, but you can also use, you know, uh, QR encode to encode some stuff. So I can say QR encode and this text is now encoded in that QR code. Um, but that only happens if you have QR encode installed. Now, what I think is the most useful function, which I've saved for halfway through the video, which is probably a bad idea, but whatever, uh, is this thing here. And well, I'll just show you how it works first off. So I can go to my, you know, just open up a terminal prompt. I'm gonna ls. Here's a list of all my files. Uh, let's say, let's say I like this file, Boomer Big. I wonder what that looks like. So I'm gonna press my plum key, and you'll see that this file has just opened up. It just popped up. That's all it's done. So uh, instead of actually having to type in, oh, what is my image viewer? It's SXIV and then tab completing all this. You can just highlight it and run the plum key and it automatically opens. Uh, additionally, uh, well, actually I'll go ahead and show you. Basically the idea is if the primary selection is detected as a file, just open it in XDG open, use whatever your default viewer is for that and uh, works out perfectly. Um, the problem is, of course, if you're in, let's say I'm in my downloads directory. So I'm gonna get rid of this for a second. If I'm in my downloads directory, uh, if I were to just run this code, it wouldn't detect that file because uh, the, the script is running from the home directory. So these lines here, what they actually do is they take the active window, that is this one, and tries to detect what directory it's actually in. So this terminal right here is now in the downloads directory. So it tries to detect that, and then it changes to that directory, then it attempts to find the file. So if I select a file here, um, it will open even though I'm not in the home directory. So that's just a little hack to get rid of that. There's probably a more elegant way of doing this. It's just, that's how I had it. I have another script doing that as well. I mean, you may know that uh, in my bindings, if you press um, super shift and enter, it'll automatically open a terminal in the same window that you have, whatever your active window is open in. So that's pretty nice. Um, and again, you can't, uh, so, I mean, if I ls home, I'm not going to be able to open these files. So, uh, if I'm from, you know, my downloads directory. So if I try to open that, nothing, it's not going to work. It's going to give me the menu. Uh, but if I cd back to home and then I try it, it'll work fine, you know, which, uh, is usually, you know, there aren't too many times where you, that's going to be a problem, but, um, Anyway, oh yeah, so I've made a, I made a said 11Q uh, t-shirt merchandise, which is down below the description. Just because if you want a shirt for a YouTube channel involving a joke that literally five people get on the channel, you can get one now. But anyway, uh, so that's that. Um, and you may notice as well, if, it, if it's detected as a file and it's opened, 
it doesn't actually give you the menu to select what you want to do with it. It's just inferred that, okay, if this is a file, they just want it opened and uh, you don't have to worry about anything else. Um, so don't give me the menu of Wiktionary and Maps and eBay and all that stuff. Obviously, I don't want to do that. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking about, I don't know, I, I think that's pretty good design, but I'll probably play around with the script a little more. I was actually thinking about, um, you know, if... If you highlight an email, I might just assume that that email is supposed to be opened in your email, your default email application. Maybe I'll just skip the whole option thing in the same way I skip the options if it looks like a uh, file, but I'm not quite sure about that. But anyway, I'm still sort of playing around with this. Uh, I am going to put it on my GitHub. I'll push it relatively soon. But uh, if you have any suggestions for it, it'll probably be up by the time that you see this video. But if you have any suggestions, feel free to give them to me. Um, and uh, as I said with Vim and NeoVim, a NeoVim at least, visual mode is not working for primary selection. I think they just have to fix it. I think it's been broken for a long time. Uh, but you should be able to get it wor working in Vim if you set auto select. But um, I mean, I'm, and I'm just talking about using visual mode, so you don't even have to use your mouse. But um, anyway, so that's it. And it's going to be default under LARBs at the super C shortcut. And I will see you guys next time.